Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of The Polymath Show. In this episode, I want to review the Kodak ZI8 uh, camera. Now, a few people have asked me about this camera. I've been using it for about a year now, and they've asked me what's so special about this camera, why would, why would I recommend this? Um, now, there's a few different types of cameras on the market that you can pick up. If you're gonna be shooting videos that you're gonna be uploading to YouTube, um, a few different types of cameras. First of all, you got the pocket cam. So you've got the Kodak ZI8, you got the flip videos, uh, some, you got the flip, that's the standard flip, and then you've got the flip HD, which shoots high definition video. Then you've got cell phone cameras like the uh, iPhone 4, it comes with uh, um, a high definition camera built right into it. Um, then you've got, you move up to maybe the uh, little camcorder type cameras um, and then you can move into the full professional video cameras it's somewhere in the three, four, five thousand dollar range. Um, I'm actually shooting this video on a Sony FX1 um, high definition camera. It's a professional camera that a friend of mine picked up a few years back. It costs somewhere around four to five thousand um, dollars. He lent it to me. I'm just playing with it right now, learning how to use it and, and um, seeing what the differences are between a camera like that and something like the Kodak because um, <clears throat> obviously there's a huge price difference. Um, so while I'm using, while I'm borrowing that camera, I figured this would be a good time to do a video um, review of the Kodak since you guys can see it on the, on the screen. So um, I want to cover what are the special, you know, what makes this camera special in this video? What, what really dive into a little bit more in depth, what is the benefit of something like this? Um, now, the very first thing that I want to talk about is the price tag. This camera costs about 150 bucks when I bought it new a year ago. Right now you can probably pick it up on Amazon for somewhere between 100 to 150 bucks. I think I've seen it brand new for about a 120 on Amazon, uh, somewhere around there, um, which is more or less the similar price range as you'd pay for a flip. Uh, the flip video cameras are about 120, 130, 140 bucks. Um, and I think the HD one might be a little bit more expensive. Um, <clears throat> The only difference between, uh, or the one, one difference to be aware of with the Kodak is that unlike the flips, it does not have built-in memory into it. So the flip video cameras, they come with a built, they built in memory to shoot 60 minutes of video. Um, with the Kodak, it comes with a little memory card that you pull out. Uh, you have to buy this separately and you can put it in, um, put it into the camera and then it records the video onto the memory card. Now, the downside of that, obviously, is that you have to buy the camera and you also have to buy a memory card before you can use it. This camera does not have, I think it's got just enough memory to record maybe like one minute of video. It's, it was not meant to be, uh, to come with memory in it. So if you buy the camera, just be aware that you're going to have to buy an external memory card to plug into it. The cards are coming down in price. Um, you can pick one up for somewhere around anywhere from 20 to 100 bucks um, for like a super high-end one. Um, I just picked up a 16 gigger which can hold hours and hours of video. So um, price wise this is a, a wickedly priced product for 150 bucks. I can't believe the features and everything that's packed into this for 150 bucks. Um, and now it's even cheaper. Like I said you can, you can probably pick up the camera and the memory card for a 150 right now. Um, I'll see if I can get a link below this to an Amazon page where I can get you guys more better pricing. So. Um, you can see so you know thumbs up for the pricing on this because this is this is a um, inexpensive or a really inexpensive price tag for a camera that packs a lot of cool features into it now the second thing that's cool about this camera is um, and this by far separates it from most cameras of this flips or this kind of like pocket cam uh, style is that this camera has an external microphone input you don't have an external microphone input on the uh, iPhones. You don't have an external microphone input on the flips. And most of these pocket cameras that are coming out, I think Sony has a few, and I think I've seen a few other uh, brands that have them. I haven't seen one yet that comes with a microphone input, except for the Kodak. Um, why is that important? Well, here's a little secret I discovered with creating YouTube videos, high definition YouTube videos. Um, what most people don't realize is that the sound quality of your video is just as important, if not more important, than the actual resolution of the video. 
So when people get into like HD cameras, like they buy a flip video, if you're recording at a high resolution, um, that the video signal is nice and clear, but you don't have a good quality sound input, it's gonna make your video seem like it has much lower quality than, it, than, the, um, than if you compare it to a video with a nice crisp sound. And I would actually argue that sound is more important than the video signal. Um, I would actually say that's probably about 60 to 70% of um, what we perceive as quality of video is actually the sound that we hear, the, the, the quality of the, of the sound. If you take a high definition signal and you have a nice crisp sound to it, um, it just makes it look really nice and, and, and clear. And we think it's actually that the video signal is clear, but it's actually the audio that's clear. If you take a high resolution video, but you put crappy sound to it, people will say, oh, that, res you know, that video is kind of low quality. They, they don't necessarily associate the sound to it. They'll think it's maybe the actual you know, pixels or the, the resolution. Um, but sound is very important in your videos. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to separate the camera from the sound. Having an external microphone output allows you to, to separate the camera from the microphone sound. Why is that important? The reason it's important is because if you're shooting a video with one of these cameras from here, if I'm shooting a video like this of myself and the sound is about a, you know about three or four feet away, no problem. These cameras are, the microphone built into these cameras are sufficient to pick up that sound fairly clearly and it's, it gives you nice quality sound. But if you take this camera and you put it on a tripod, just like the one I have mounted right here, but it's about what, four or five feet away from me, if you take this Kodak camera, put it on a tripod five feet away from you and you try to record the sound, first of all, it's gonna be really quiet. Secondly, it's gonna pick up a lot of background noise in the room. Thirdly, you're gonna hear echoes bouncing off the walls. Um, and you're also gonna pick up any kind of, like I have an, uh, an aquarium to my right here. I have a filter and a little bubble maker in it. Um, if I don't turn off, the, uh, turn off those things in the, uh, on the aquarium, this camera, the microphone on this camera, and any camera really, will pick that up. It'll, it'll, you'll hear it in the video. It'll sound just as loud or maybe not just as loud, but it'll sound almost as loud as my voice. So um, the benefit of having an external microphone is that you can mount the camera on a tripod three or four or five or six feet away or even further, wherever you want. And then you can have a microphone that, that's plugged into the camera and the microphone is um, you know, attached to your shirt here. So... Um, that's basically what I'm using right now with the, uh, uh, my friend Sony um, FX1. I have a microphone that's attached to my shirt and there's a wire hooked up to it. The, run, the wire runs to the floor and then plugs into the camera on the side of it. I could do the exact same thing with this Kodak because I can have it on the tripod and I can have a microphone attached to my shirt running to the, on, through the wire on the floor and plugged into the uh, camera. And you're gonna get a nice crisp sound um, even if the camera is three, four, five, six, seven feet away. Um, a couple things to keep in mind with microphones when it comes to the Kodak ZA8. You can't just go by the Kodak ZA8 and pick up any microphone. You have to match the camera to the type of microphone. There are different types of microphones out there. You have to know which one that matches with this. The biggest thing to, to understand with the microphone options for the Kodak is that um, different cameras require different types of uh, microphone setups. This Sony FX1 camera that I'm using right now it, um, it can take a microphone signal from an unpowered microphone. What does that mean? That means that this microphone is basically, I have it right here on my shirt. There's a wire attached to the microphone. The wire goes down, plugs into the camera with nothing in between. It's just microphone, wire, plug into the camera. The camera itself feeds a small little tiny, um, it sends a little uh, amount of power through the wire to the microphone, the microphone records my voice and it sends it back to the camera. So the camera, the Sony FX1 I'm using, it actually powers the microphone right from the camera itself. With these types of um, cameras like the Kodak and most other cameras of this, um, uh, of this type, they don't actually power the, even if they have an input like this one, they don't actually power the microphones. You have to get a microphone that is self-powered. What does that mean? Well. Here's an example of um, a microphone that's just like the one I'm using on my shirt right now, except that it's powered. So here's the microphone part of it. I'll see if I can zoom in. 
Um, so this is the little microphone piece that it's got a little clip here that basically just clips onto my shirt. And the difference between this one and the one I'm using right now is if you follow this wire, if you follow this wire, you'll see that there is a little tiny box attached to it. And this little box basically has a little um, power switch on it, on and off, and there's a little battery inside here. So if I open this up, there's a little battery inside this, uh, this case, and that battery powers the microphone, okay? So you need to get a microphone that has a power source like this if you're, um, if you're gonna be using a microphone with uh, Kodak ZI8. So the battery in here powers the microphone, the microphone then sends a signal back through this wire to the Kodak. And this is a, a next tech uh, microphone I picked up from Radio Shack. Um, I believe Audio Technica makes the exact same thing. I think Next Tech is just like a private brand that Radio Shack or the Source, as they call themselves now, um, have branded. Um, I'll see if I can get the link for you guys so you can see what it is. I think this thing costs about 30 bucks, 40 bucks. Um, and it um, has a self powered little module in here. So I used this microphone before. It's okay. The sound quality is pretty decent. It's, um, I wasn't too impressed with it though. It's, uh, not as clear as the microphone that I'm using right now with uh, with the Sony camera so, and I didn't really like the fact that it was I was stuck to a wire um, so the other option you have in terms of powered microphones that work with the Kodak is this little bad boy over here which is the uh, Yeti microphone I picked up and the way this microphone works is that it has a USB cable that's plugged into the bottom of this and this USB cable runs um, to your computer. So you plug it into your computer or your laptop and the power from that USB cable powers the microphone. Okay. And then there's another plug in here that connects to one of these 3.5 millimeter uh, cables and it has a normal little three and a half millimeter jack that plugs right into the Kodak camera on the side here. Okay. So this is another option to go with is, uh, is a microphone like this that's powered by the computer and then it sends the signal through the cable to the uh, Kodak. And that, that in fact is the setup that I use almost for most of my videos that I've uploaded is I use the Kodak and the uh, Yeti microphone from Blue. Um, the cool thing about this microphone is that it has a few different um, ways of picking up sound. And um, it, like I said, it's powered by the computer and if, if I'm recording a video like this one where I'm sitting at a desk and I'm projecting my voice maybe two or three feet away from the microphone, it picks up the sound really nicely and it sounds great. The downside of this type of microphone is if you're gonna be shooting videos like some of the videos I do with my, when I do whiteboard videos, I'm standing at a whiteboard, or if I'm outside or if I'm moving around um, and I'm not sitting in a spot like, you know, at a desk, then this kind of microphone is not the best solution because when I have this sitting on my desk and I'm standing at my whiteboard about four or five feet away or six feet away, I have to, um, I have to switch the mode on this microphone to basically pick up the sound of the whole room. And then once again, you start to pick up um, echoes in the room, you start to pick up noise from uh, any kind of, you know, like for me, it's the aquarium with the filter in the aquarium. So there are different background noises that this type of thing starts to pick up when you're not sitting right in front of it and you don't have it turned into the mode where it picks up sound you know from this distance here so um you know benefits of this is close up and it sounds really great if you if you're standing far away or if you're um you're not close to this microphone it does kind of pick up an echo so the there's a, th a third solution that i'm looking into right now which is uh, a microphone similar to this um, or the one that I'm wearing right now, but with a wireless uh, connection. So um, it's, uh, I actually picked up one from Sennheiser. Um, it's a fairly expensive microphone in the five or $600 range. Um, I'm, I picked it up because I want to test it out to see how it works with these cameras. Uh, so I'll have a review of that for you guys later on. But if, if you're looking for an inexpensive solution, something like this will work if you want to go upgrade to something for about a hundred bucks or so you can pick up one of these Yeti microphones they work great if you want to get um, a full wireless solution where you can move around and um, and still get really clear sound 
then you're going to have to look at um, potentially start looking at some of these higher end uh, wireless microphones, which you know start at around four or five hundred bucks. Um, so that's pretty much it for the uh, for the uh, microphone side of it. Um, I really recommend that you guys, if you're going to be making videos for YouTube, to look into and research the camera and how it works with microphones. The, if you can get a good quality microphone sound into a camera, it's going to improve the quality, the overall perception of the quality of your videos, big time. If you if if your videos sound good, it's going to um, the it's going they're going to seem much higher quality. Um, I would even argue more higher quality than if the resolution on them is higher. So um, that's the next thing I want to jump into is resolution. This thing is a full high definition camera. It shoots at 1080p at 30 frames per second. It also shoots at 720p um, at either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now, why do you need 60 frames per second? 60 frames per second is good for if you're doing any kind of shots where there's a lot of movement or there's a lot of action, like if you're shooting a sports, if you're, you know, uh, outside or you're, let's say you're recording your dogs running around or if you're shooting uh, your kids playing soccer or something like that. If you have 60 frames per second, it's gonna be less blurry. You're gonna get a much crisper image compared to 30 frames per second. So that is another thing that differentiates this camera from something like this. Um, the other part that's cool about 60 frames per second is if you're going to be doing any uh, green screen videos or any kind of keying where you're um, standing against a backdrop, a green screen backdrop, um, any movement, like if I move my arm around from left to right against a, a backdrop, um, if you're recording at 60 frames per second, it's going to, it's going to look less blurry. It's going to, there's going to be less blurriness in the video. If you have less blurriness, it's going to, um, the green screen effect is going to be much um, easier to control. It's going to look much cleaner than if you're shooting at 30 frames per second. So that's another benefit if you're if you're ever planning to, if you're looking for a camera that you will eventually want to play with some green screen stuff, some cool special effects, um, you might want to look into a camera that has 60 frames per second like the Kodak. Um, so the resolution on this is pretty cool. I like, I like the fact that now most of the videos that I shoot, I shoot them at 720p, 60 frames per second because I'm eventually uploading to YouTube, which I only upload at 720p. There really is no point for me to shoot my videos at 1080p um, at this time because I'm not going to, my final output, is, I'm not going to DVD, or sorry, I'm not going to Blu-ray with this. I'm not going to, the application is not to show these videos in a movie theater. Um, where you would need super high resolution, you know, high def signal. 720p is more than plenty for uh, today's standards um, on YouTube if you're uploading it for, um, you know, to be viewed online. Um, now, one final thing I want to talk about with the uh, resolution, because there's, there's a, um, another cool feature that's built into these cameras that um, some of the camcorder cameras don't have. Um, even if you're getting into like a four or five hundred dollar camcorder camera, or even with this Sony FX1 uh, camera, it's a few years old, and this camera doesn't actually have a built-in um, video compressor. This thing actually has a built-in video compressor. What does that mean? What that means is that when you're recording a high-definition signal, if you're any high-definition video in its raw format is huge. The file sizes are just ginormous. Okay, so. Um, when you have a camera like this, it has an actual built-in um, compressor right into the camera. So when you shoot 10 minutes of video on this camera, um, the signal that it's capturing, it's automatically compressing it and it'll compress that signal to somewhere around 250 megabytes file size, right? Which is a quarter of a gigabyte for 10 minutes. So for a 60 minute video, you're looking at about 1.5 gigs. Um, for 10 minutes, once again, it's about 250 megabytes. If you're talking about an uncompressed signal, which some of these cameras record with an uncompressed signal, like the Sony FX1 I'm using right now doesn't have a compression thing built right into it. So 10 minutes on the Sony is somewhere around 2.2 or 2.5, uh, it's about 2.2 gigabytes of space that it takes. So 250 megs versus 2.5 gigs. So about eight times as much hard drive space that it takes for the same size file for the sorry for the same um, video length now um, 
why is that important to you? If you're gonna be taking a video, let's say that your application is to shoot a video like this with the, with the camera, and if you're not gonna be doing any video editing or some just basic video editing where you just wanna plug it in and then upload straight to YouTube, you wanna get a camera with built-in compression because you don't wanna be uploading uncompressed files to YouTube. It's gonna take you forever and the file size is gonna be huge. Um, like I said, it's about eight times as big. So um, if I shoot a 10 minute video with this, 250 megs, for me to upload that to YouTube takes somewhere around 30 to 45 minutes. If I was shooting the same video with the Sony FX, if I don't compress it first before uploading to YouTube, that'll take me eight times as long. So you're talking about five or six hours to upload the video to YouTube compared to about 30 to 45 minutes. That is huge if you're planning to do a lot of videos. And when you upload files to YouTube, it kind of slows down your internet. You can't really do anything on your computer when you're, when you're uploading because it, it just slows down your computer to a crawl or your internet speed to a crawl when you're uploading videos. So uh, just be aware of the fact that not all cameras have built-in compression. That's something you should look at. Don't just look at a camera and say, okay, well, this is HD, this is HD, this camera over here is HD. The word HD doesn't really mean that much. You have to look at more depth. What HD what? Like what are the features that the HD has? Um, what's the resolution that it shoots at? And what's the bit rate? This thing shoots at a bit rate, I think on the 720p setting, I think it shoots at a bit rate of about um, 3.5 thousand kilobits per second, so 3,500 kilobits per second. The uncompressed signal on the Sony is about 24,000 kilobits per second, so about eight times as, as much data stream, um, which unless I'm going to uh, be making videos on Blu-ray or I'm, or I'm going to a full theater production, um, if I'm just uploading to YouTube, you don't need 24,000 um, kilobits per second. It's gonna, people would, it would take people like an hour just to watch your video, uh, a five minute clip because it would continue to buffer on them. So YouTube, you're probably gonna be going to like anywhere from one to three, uh, one to three thousand kilobits per second uh, for your videos anyways in, as the final output. So you don't need um, a video stream that's like 24,000 kilobits per second. But some of the cheaper cameras on the market out there, um, or some of the cameras that are a little bit older before you know MPEG-4 compression came out, not all of them have video compression built right into the camera. These cameras do. The Flip One has it, and this uh, Kodak has it. So that's something you want to look at when you're when you're buying these cameras. Otherwise, what you're going to be stuck with is a camera that produces a high definition signal in a raw, uncompressed format and it, you're gonna shoot a 10 minute video and then it's gonna take you three hours to copy it to your computer and it's gonna take you a week to edit it because it's gonna you know, be so slow on your computer you know, moving the file around and editing it and it takes up a lot of uh, memory and RAM and then to upload it to YouTube is gonna take forever as well. So unless you're into like super high definition video and you're using super high definition you know, uh, video editing products and you know how to take files from 24,000 kilobits and compress them down to three, uh, 3,000 kilobits or, or a YouTube friendly format. Um, if, you, if you understand all that stuff, fine, play with it. You can use an, a raw signal, that's fine. Or if you're gonna be doing some cool special effects or whatever and you wanna get the highest quality without any compression. But for the average person that's uploading videos to YouTube, you wanna pick uh, a camera that has compression built right into it. Um, so that's pretty much it for the um, uh, actually, no, there's one more cool feature that I want to show you guys with this camera that the f I don't think the Flip has this and, um, you know, the cameras like this and the Flip don't have this cool feature. It's the ability to do um, uh, a macro zoom focus. So I'm going to shoot a quick little video here. I'll see if I can um, um, do a little picture in picture and show you guys here. So here is, um, this is my little uh, um, Warhammer miniature of my Orc Warboss. And I'm gonna shoot it here with the Kodak. So this is, this is what it would look like with a standard flip video camera um, or like one of these um, iPhone ones. So take a look at this. As you can see, if I spin this around, you can see that it's really blurry, right? That's because the focus point on these cameras was not meant to be at that distance. It's somewhere around here maybe it starts to come into focus, but then you're too far away to see any detail on it. Right? So what the Kodak has, it has this little switch on the top that once I flick the switch, watch what happens. Look at that. See how much more 
crisp that is. Great, so this is with the macro. This is without. This is with. And that's without. Pretty big difference, right? So that's something to be aware of with the uh, with the flip cameras. If you're if you're planning to do any kind of um, uh, video shots of anything up close like this, you're probably not going to um, you're not going to be happy with the uh, with the, um, the fact that those cameras don't have a little macro function. So um, that's the neat thing about the Kodak is it has it has a little button up top here. You just flick it and it switches the lens into a, a macro zoom um, macro focus zoom um, function. So that's another cool feature of the Kodak that you don't see in uh, cameras like the f iPhone and you don't see that in um, the uh, uh, flip videos and some of the other ones that are out there. Um, one thing that I'll say about this camera, um, actually first I'll just say that for 150 bucks and for the features that are packed into this thing, I highly recommend this camera. I, I definitely think it's worth the money um, unless you're gonna be going into a, um, if you have like a five or six thousand dollar budget when you where you want to go super professional if you're just looking to make youtube videos and you're you got a couple hundred dollar budget i'd recommend the kodak that i ate um definitely like there's there's i've played with this camera for a year i've shot a lot of videos with it um and so far i'm really really impressed with this and that's coming from somebody who doesn't i've never really liked kodak i've bought some actual digital cameras with from them before and I've I haven't been really impressed with them so when this thing came out I was pretty skeptical um, because of the brand and when and I like I said I, I didn't really like Kodak until I got this camera once I got it I started playing with it I'm like okay this is a really good quality product that Kodak has come out with so um, I do def definitely recommend it. There's one thing I don't like about this camera. It's a small little thing but it, it kind of bugs me I wanted to show you guys at the bottom of this camera there's a little, I'll zoom in, I'll show you. This is something that the flips do the same thing. The little button you press here, and when you push up on it, it pops open, and there is the um, little USB port that plugs into your computer, right? No problem, that's cool. That's kind of how the flips do it as well. Um, the flip video cameras do the exact same thing, except what they did with the flips is they put the USB port on the top left or top right, I can't remember, but it's at the top. With the Kodak, they put it on the bottom. Okay, what's the big deal about that? Not a big deal, except for the fact that if you try to mount a tripod mount to the bottom of this camera, um, you can do it, but once you mount the tripod mount, you can't pop this open. You can't get your finger in there to pull the little USB thing out. So you have to basically unscrew the tripod mount off, pop open the USB, plug it into your computer, copy the videos off, then close this, close that, and then screw the tripod mount on. That's an extra step that I don't like. If you're shooting a lot of videos, you know, you want efficiency. You don't want to have to be, you know, screwing this thing on and taking it off and putting it on. It's, 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 it's a pain in the butt. So what I ended up doing is I ended up popping this thing open, pulling the little USB thingy out, and then closing this part and then I just kind of screw the uh, the tripod mount on permanently on there, and then that's it. That's what I do is I just keep it on there, and then I keep this little USB thing sticking on. I plug it into the computer when I'm done shooting a video. Um, now the thing that sucks about that is first of all it looks ugly. You got this little um, USB thing sticking out on the side. Uh, secondly, um, it could get damaged. It could kind of if you're not careful, you could maybe break this off or, or pull it off or something like that. So it's not the coolest design thing as far as um, using a tripod mount. But that's pretty much the only thing I don't like about it. Uh, outside of that, um, it's a really cool camera. And speaking of tripod mounts, that's another thing that uh, if you're using like an iPhone or a cell phone camera for uh, shooting your videos, that's another thing that these cameras don't have is they don't have a tripod mount. Whereas the Kodak and the Flips, they do have a tripod mount so you can put it on a tripod um, and record your video from you know a few feet away or whatever. So uh, you can use a big tripod or you can use these little, uh, I don't know where I put it, but I have this little miniature tripod that you can just plug it in and you can stand it on a desk or something like that. Really cool stuff um, that, um, you know, it makes it, makes it easier for you to shoot your videos without kind of, if you try to shoot it with a cell phone camera, you, I don't know what you're going to duct tape it to a tripod or kind of try to balance it or something like that. Um, with these, you can put a little tripod or plug it into a big one. So. 
um, yeah, another cool feature about it. But yeah, besides the USB thing that, and the tripod mount, little hiccup there that I don't think the Kodak engineers kind of thought that part through very well. Besides that, everything else on this camera I absolutely love. So um, I definitely recommend this if you're looking at uh, picking up a camera to shoot videos that you're going to be outputting to YouTube. Um, check it out. It's a nice camera and uh, yeah, I definitely recommend it. So that's the Kodak ZI8. Um, last thing I'll just go through is just show you guys what comes in the box. Um, in the box you get the camera. There's no software CDs or DVDs or anything like that because the software is built right onto the camera. So when you take the USB, you plug it into your computer, it'll install the software right from the camera, which is pretty cool because if you take this camera to a friend's house, um, you can plug it into their computer and you can install the software on their machine without having to worry about bringing the CD because nothing sucks more than recording a video and then plugging a device into someone else's computer and then realizing, oh crap, you don't have the software for it, so it doesn't work. So you'll never lose the software because it's built right into the camera itself. Um, so it comes with a camera and it comes with, obviously, the um, instruction manual, it comes with the battery. There's a charger um, with this camera, you can charge it two different ways. One way you can charge it is by plugging it into the wall, oh sorry, plugging it into the USB port on your computer or laptop. So when the camera's plugged in, it's automatically charging the battery. Um, but it's not a very fast charging system. So the Kodak also comes with a wall charger. I don't have it here, um, but you can plug it in. There's a little wall charger. You plug this into the wall charger and then you plug the wall charger into the wall and it charges it um, a lot quicker than if you have it plugged into your laptop or computer. The flip ones don't have that. I'm, I'm pretty sure unless they change the boxes, um, the flip that I had didn't come with a wall charger. The only way to charge a flip was to plug it into a computer. Um, so that's another cool thing that the Kodak has that the flips don't. Um, so it comes with that and it also comes with uh, two sets of cables. One is an HDMI cable. Now these cables themselves are like, I've seen these things sell for like 40 or 50 bucks. So it's kind of cool because it comes with a free HDMI cable. And it also comes with another cable, which is for um, to plug this into your TV. Um, if you're if you don't have an HD TV, this is just a standard um, audio video cables, AV AV cables. So that's what comes in the box. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about this camera, I've been using it for about a year now, um, so I kind of know it fairly well. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below this video, um, ask away, and I'll see if I can uh, help you guys out. Um, if you, if you like this review, if you, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to click the little like button below the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, um, there should be a button above, just click the subscribe button and that way you don't miss any of my uh, future videos. All right. So that's pretty much it for, uh, for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.